the entire game, whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees ready folks don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid Four two Oilers still five minutes left. There's been no goal scored in the third period of play. You know what's interesting about this? The Edmonton Oilers have not scored a single goal in the third period of play in this uh, series, which is crazy. And it's, it's a dangerous way to live. But they got a two goal lead here. But Dallas haven't scored. Edmonton had done a better job earlier in the series. If you notice, even earlier in the game tonight, they lose a lot of faceoffs. People don't talk about that enough, but. Oftentimes, like they don't, they lose the faceoff in the zone. They don't, they don't take advantage of stuff. They're losing the faceoffs a lot. They're doing a much better job as this game is going on, winning faceoffs. And and if you'll notice too, Dallas haven't really had legitimate big scoring opportunities. Edmonton are good at protecting Skinner at times, and I think they realize, dear God, we better protect this guy. <laughs> Man, like you see Adam Henry uh, game, we, he's like, eleven. We better. We got a problem. Like, do not let them shoot. Like, and it's work. Like I saw Think they do this. That. They did it against Vancouver. They're good at protecting Skinner. That's the thing. And Adam Henrique is a face-off specialist. He's won 11 of 15. People don't understand if you've never played the game before. These guys are so good at this level, and you're winning draws in your end and preventing teams from setting up. So that's very important. Good observation by you, Gabe. When you're 11 for 15, you're doing your job. Usually Dallas wins those battles. Oh, it's so massive in, in the postseason, these face-offs. When you're in the other zone, you don't have to win it clean to get it back to the point, but just jam it into the corner. So you just, bam, it smashes into the corner. Next thing you know, their defensemen have their face against the glass, and you're, so you're banging, you're crashing, you're cycling the puck behind the net, and or you win it clean, and you get it back to the point for a nice shot, uh, and or when you're in your own defensive uh, end, you win and you get it into your corner to your defenseman, right? So it's so big. Edmonton's just done a nice, nice job with this, but... Dallas are pressing, and uh, all right, guys, we're going to see here. I think their goalie's three... out. Is he out? Not yet. No, I was going to say, we're going to see. No, he's still there's there. 330, okay. There's 3.30 left, and uh, they still haven't pulled their goalie yet. Remember the other night I talked about Edmonton stupidly pulling their goalie with three minutes left, and they were only down by one goal. Dallas are down by two, and they still haven't done it yet, except now's the time if you're Dallas, and I imagine they're going to do it right now. That's not the what Cam wants corner. to hear. <laughs> 
That's not what Cam wants to hear right now. Okay. They're not doing it. I'm amazed. Yeah. The puck just got yeah. in Edmonton zone. Just lose three minutes left. They didn't pull the goalie. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, man, maybe the coach The coach has the puck line. He's like, we're well, not pulling the goalie. Come on, Gabor. Keep on. Keep on. You're in. There's no need for this. No, I, I yeah. wow. It's three minutes. I'm, I'm shocked, Gabe. They usually pull down two. Me too. Three and a half, four. Like this. He's had two opportunities where even I'd be like, all right, all right, all right. Wow. Pull him, pull him. Like now. Yeah. Like right now. All right, they the just break. did it with 2.40 yeah, left. Done. Yeah, all right. Here we go. And we're here. Dee, 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 dee. There's, actually, <laughs> there's actually been more, to be honest, in these playoffs, there are more times when teams pull the goalie, they seem to score, than to give yeah. up the empty net. It's actually been, teams have been pretty good at scoring with the extra man. And especially, you know, there's a two-goal cushion here. We've seen this a couple of times where the team will score one, but it's too little too late. 2.13 left uh, right now. All right, so uh, just quick baseball check. We'll get Paul's uh, thoughts on the NBA. Yankees are up one nothing uh, right now in the middle of the sixth uh, inning. They're minus uh, 270 on the money line. The Angels are plus 210, total 4.5. Rockies up 7-3 on the Guardians, top of 9. Nothing to do with this game. And uh, I did like the under of this game, and we like the under of every Astro game and uh, Mariner game. It was a light to- total tonight. It's seven. It's one one right now. We're in the sixth inning. Uh, current number is is uh, five and a half, guys. And to be honest, I think it goes under the five and a half still. Seattle are a serious money maker to the under this Mariner team. We posted this pick earlier uh, on Twitter. NBA basketball. Uh, we play tomorrow night, and the point spread has gone up to five points right now. Minnesota Timberwolves, five-point favorites, Paul. Total, 209 and a half. Are we going to have a basketball game on Saturday? Are we going to game six, in your opinion? Hey, look, I, I'm not counting Dallas out tomorrow night. And I know the Timberwolves have the momentum, and everybody's figuring, all right, this is it. We're going to get to game six, and that's going to be the inflection point because if Minnesota would win that game six, Let's face it, you go to a game seven at home, and we all know what happens at these game sevens uh, at home, although it didn't happen last Sunday, but that's besides the point. Generally speaking, the home team wins. So Dallas, if they lose tomorrow night, will be under a lot of pressure. But I, look, Towns, Anthony, they, they, these guys, uh, 20 or 38 last night, Six of ten from beyond the arc, fourteen to twenty-eight inside the arc. You make shots, you win games, but I still think Dallas has the money players here, and I think they're going to end up winning the series. Will they win tomorrow night? I'm not sure. Uh, I think they'll keep it close. Uh, I don't see Minnesota coming back and winning this series. I, I just think Dallas has the better of it. Losing Lively was was big. Because Lively, the last four games that he's played, 45 rebounds. And uh, in the two games against uh, Minnesota, he had seven offensive rebounds. So this guy has been a key piece to their success. Hopefully they get him back from that neck injury. He is questionable to play. Uh, I believe that if he doesn't play in game uh, five, he'll play in game six. And I think the Mavericks will close out. If not in game five, they will close out at home. I like the Mavericks to go on, face the Celtics. Uh, They lost two games to the Celtics this year, but I kind of throw those out. Gafford did not play in either of them. One of them was a 28-point loss, and uh, the Celtics made 21 of 43 from beyond the arc. So I, I think it's Dallas and Boston on a collision course. In the NBA Finals, we'll have to probably wait around a little bit. Uh, I believe they start on June 6th, but uh, it should be an interesting series. Empty netter. Oh, no. 5-2. Bouchard was- buries the empty netter. Thank God I took Bouchard to score goals tonight in Stankhoven. Oh, you did? All right. Oh, was- my, prop, my props were amazing. Bad pick on my, my part, taking Dallas 2.5. Gabe warned me, too. Like, if you don't get a goal 2.5, it's a very dangerous bet because 
they're going to pull the goalie early and I'm, I'm doomed. I, it was a trap. It was a trap. You know what? That I, was crazy, Paul, I, earlier. I, 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 I even left. took a shot at myself. I said, I'm the biggest yeah. lemon and there's something about this. No, they I'm were down lemon. by two and Dallas were plus two and a half, minus 115. Yeah. And I steal. said, man, I said, man, that should be like minus 170. Minus one. Yeah. Like it shouldn't, like it's a weird, it was a weird number. I said, well, it almost seems too good to be true. And there was something about it. I was just all about getting Edmonton home here. Listen, maybe Dallas can bury one uh, here right now. They still have a minute and a half left, but Edmonton are going back uh, to Dallas tied up at two. So both Dallas teams could end up in the finals here still, uh, potentially. I think the maps, and I want to say, Paul, I'm kind of with you. And I will admit, I said last night, I was like, man, Minnesota's going to go back home. You know, now they're, they're probably going to win. And it's going, oh, they got to go back to Dallas on Saturday. But then I started thinking, you know what? The Mavericks, you let them off the hook last night. You just said the NBA Finals start on the 6th, which is next Thursday. You'll have a full week off. It's a big freaking difference. You let them off the hook the other night. Finish it off on a Thursday night. You have a full week to get ready for the NBA playoffs. You don't have to go back home and worry about another stupid game on Saturday and a potential game seven again. Let and great point. It's crazy to say, oh, they can't win without Lively against the Celtics. People are like, who the hell is Derek Lively? But it changes everything. Gafford's not very good offensively. Lively can contribute offensively and get you to rebounds. Gafford's a good rim protector and it keeps Powell off the floor, right? Like yeah. it, it's so big, man, that Lively plays Paul. And, you know, he'll be ready for the finals. But now that it's up to five, I'm starting to buy in at the Mavericks in the play tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I really think they're going to compete here. I, I just think they have, the, like I said, they have the money player. Okay, we'll wrap up with you on the other side. Hold on, Paul. 5-2, 29 seconds left. Whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that what wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid Five two final score tonight in the National Hockey League. The Edmonton Oilers get it done, and um, now the uh, the nightly therapy session with the media will be a little bit uh, less <laughs> confrontational as it normally is. 
has I, I, I tweeted about this today and I maintain this. It's absolutely insanity how much access the Edmonton Oilers give to their players during the postseason. And there they were this morning. They had like an hour meltdown this morning on a game day. And the media is upset that Darnell Nurse didn't talk to them long enough after they've been bashing him and ripping him and asking him annoying questions. So he did exactly what he should do. And he gave them short one word answers. They said, Oh, Dallas is giving you a lot of problems. You're having a hard time against them. Uh, what are you what are you gonna do tonight to to make sure it doesn't go wrong? He goes, Compete, play hard, stop talking. Next question. Everything he said was like one or two words. Skate fast, compete, compete hard, play hard, compete, hit people. And then after even Ryan Rashad, who I actually like, goes on to oh, it's very unlike Darnell. He's normally very polite with us. What do you want him to do? You guys want to spit and slap on a guy like constantly and expect him to be nice to you? Like, I swear to God, whoever the hell the communications and PR director, you you know, I don't want to throw you out, bro, but you're doing a horrible job, man. Take take note of what the Montreal Canadiens do. Treat the media like crap. All right. Yep. Don't give them access to the room. Tell them Damn no. Right. Protect your players. <laughs> don't let them in. Say when you're coming in, you tell them, you tell everyone. You got 10 minutes, everybody. You got 10 minutes. And then conveniently, half the team's in the shower. You leave out a couple of dudes that played four minutes. There's a method to this. What do you guys do? What, you're not pros? You want me to come in and tell you how to do this? Where's the dry style? He's in the shower. Where's Connor? He's in the shower. Right? McLeod's right over there. You want to talk to him? There he is. That's right. Picker didn't play tonight, Cam. Backup goalie. Calvin, you face the media tonight. Seriously, I'm dead serious. I, oh, I Calvin, know you, you face the media tonight. It was the best. My boss came up to me. He's like, why are you always getting taped with Rick Jackman? I go, because he's sleeping with my friend, and he's the only guy who talks. The Leafs had a secret door. I see Domi and all these guys see ya. They're in their car speeding out from the secret door and leaving all the like guys in the press box to answer the questions. These guys are gone, man. You're right, Gabe. This Edmonton media stuff, like, dude. Like, what are you doing letting McDavid take these questions? Like, get, 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 get your head out of your, out of your butt, man. Are you stupid? Come on. Figure it out. I like the, uh, I like the, there's a dude in the middle of this Euler uh, party rocking a Slayer shirt. Caught my eye. Good job, kid. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and, uh, Paul, everybody's got Oilers. There's this one dude who's got his hands in his pocket. He's got a Slayer t-shirt on. <laughs> he almost looks like he's lost. Look. He's like, man, I, th- I thought this was Metal Fest. He's looking around. Like, well, where's, where, where's the band? It's like, look. Amazing. He's got yeah. the shades on, like the Slayer shirt. Uh, all right, so, Paul, I brought but we, we'll get you out of here in like three, four minutes. We got in this segment. So, I brought it up last night, Paul, and I said, you know, I sort of talked about Floyd Mayweather in the days when people would want to see him lose and then it ended up betting against him, even though it wasn't a smart play. Like Ricky Hatton and De La Hoya and a long list of fighters, right? And people would try to talk themselves into it. Are we doing that with the Dallas Mavericks? Because you just said, well, they lost twice to the Celtics, but you throw that out. Can't you know? Well, do, do you think that are you giving the title? You're not giving the title to the Celtics just yet, are you? I'm not. But one thing I am amazed at is how much shade they throw at Luca. Some of these guys. It's like I I understand. You know, Kyrie's a great player, but Kyrie at this point is a sidekick. Kyrie had single-digit points last series in two of the games, and they still throw shade at this guy. Uh, I was watching Paul Pierce the other day. Well, you know, Luca, he just jogs back, but Kyrie's the energy. And, look, I, I think that they, they want to trash Dallas. They just do. I think the majority of the media wants to see Minnesota prevail. I don't think the NBA wants but, that. But you know what, I Paul? Let, What's that? let me just say, every every sorry, I just want to say everyone's getting shade now. And you're right. Luca, dude, there's a narrative. They didn't like when Jokic was the king of the NBA either, right? There's a pattern there with that. Right? But at the same point in time, ESPN is all over the Celtics all the time. They're ripping Jalen <laughs> Brown. He's a bad guy. He's unlikable. Uh now there's a new con they started started some new controversy this morning, which is stupid. Jason Tatum didn't celebrate enough when he saw that Brown won the MVP. Yeah, as if. Like, I'm sure Jason Tatum's losing sleep over this right now. It's just the modern media, Paul. They're all just, you know, 
they're low lowlifes, bro, and they stir up the pot, and they don't even have any substance to it. Yeah, but like you said, Luca's been amazing, Luke, and there's shade to him, and no, Tatum and Brown thing, have been amazing, and there's shade to them. Well, uh, yeah, you, and you're right about that. I happen to have Luca for the uh, MVP of the West. I have him like at, I think at eight to one or seven to one. But with Luca is he's improved every single year, and even his defense has gotten a lot better. So I give the guy a lot, a lot of credit, and they still just keep coming at the guy. And I, I just, I, I, I don't know even know what to make of it anymore. I have my own theories about this, but I, I think they should just let up on on Luca a little bit, and appreciate what the Dallas Mavericks have accomplished because nobody expected this. And you also have to appreciate the moves that they made during the season in improving their team with P.J. Washington and Gafford because post that, their winning percentage was off the chart. So clearly they weren't going to win anything with just the Luka and uh, Kyrie show, but they managed to put pieces in place, and what they've accomplished is actually spectacular. I'm sure, I'm sure you're missing this, Paul, right now. It's the Philippines preseason cup. Uh, SBU oh, Red Lions. Bang Bang? Uh, bang and, uh, uh, SSC, uh, the r Stags are playing right now. <laughs> a little uh, Filipino uh, basketball action. Oh, listen, I, I, love, I love betting that live. The lines were always pretty soft. Uh, I, I only got off 200 at a time, but they were soft lines. I think they weren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Circle put it to the That's bang, a, that's bang. A, <laughs> Else, You're the best, Paul. Yeah. So um we'll speak next Wednesday, Paul. It'll be the night before the NBA Finals. We have final breakdown and all that. And I'll be back in uh Shay Harbors. No problem with the internet. Whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal. Only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify in these majors. You, you just you got to go do it, man. Like, and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like, "I'm not." You know what you signed up for, so I, I don't like the pettiness. And um, I, I, I 100% think Taylor Gooch should be in the major championships. Mm -hmm. So, in the same note, I'm saying this, but also it's like, hey, this is the world in which we live in right now, and and you, and you don't deserve anything. Only on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. I don't know what's going on at the Angel game but right now against the Yankees. Seems to be an unusual amount of people there. Like a bunch of Angel fans, though, not just uh, Yankee fans. 2 nothing in the baseball game right now. Speaking of the Yankees, let's bring in 
Mr. Yankee himself. Um, <laughs> not quite the Yankee, not the Yankee uh, Clipper, the Yankee Dipper. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, great, George. As soon as you join us there. What am I oh. doing? You're a, you're a mush. You're worse than the Yankee. Oh, I'm Trump, 11. Did you see this? Did you see this? Lemon. Logan Lemon. O'Hop, you just hit a home run. God. I'm on the Yankees, too. Lemons. Oh, uh, you're ahead of me. Uh, shocking. Uh, so, no, I, I didn't see it yet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you didn't even see it. Yeah. I was wondering, where's your frustration? Yeah, you're going to see. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, Prime is very slow here. Very. We, uh, we have it on he's Prime. in New York. I don't know too. you're watching. He's in New York. Prime, too. Prime I like this. I haven't yeah, even had it. I haven't even before, like five seconds before it curts, man. You're a cable. I still reeks, don't have bro. it, by the way. I'm a batter yeah, yeah. behind you guys. I'm, I got yeah. Logan O'Hop uh, batting right now. That's how well, he's like far Star Trek, I man. Like he's beaming up to different planets. Like he, I, I can't even watch hockey games with him anymore. I go to the gambling sites because he gets the goals thirty seconds before me. I'm like, I got to know ahead of time here. I can't deal this with this. You crap. know what the hard part is when you, when I'm watching the Yankee game, I can't be on social media because you, I'll find out what happens before yeah. it happens. It's like Gabe says it. Someone's tweeting it out as well here. Uh, this is a legitimate home. Now it's an Angel Stadium home when it hits that stupid wall, that Otani wall. Uh, that they lowered it before uh, for our Johnny. Let's not raise that again. Pull up two to one. Let's not panic yet. Everything's going to be all I'm right. I'm on the Yankees minus a run and a half. I'm panicking plenty. They cannot score runs right now. 11 runs in the last four games for the Yankees. The offense is once again broken. And one of the runs, by the way, was a little league home run that a Volpe got, got last inning because the Angels threw the ball into the third base stands. Runs are runs. Don't worry about it. We're going to be okay, George. 1-1. One, one. They get another one. 1-1 one, one in Houston and uh, Seattle right now, Kurtz. The constant under train continues in this series and uh, with this team. I hate betting unders, too, but it's, it's there's no choice. No choice. Uh, them, they, they have trouble scoring. The Braves have a lot of trouble scoring as well, and then even more so now without Acuna. Dude, the Mariners, like I said, uh, I'm going to get the exact number here, but it was seven tonight, just a machine. One one right now. The in game total is down to what uh, to four and a half, guys, uh yep. in this game. And I don't think we're gonna get to five, uh, to be honest. And the what do you think of the Yankees and the Angels total here? That, you know, it was five and a half. It ju- oh, it's back to five and a half right now. Plus <laughs> one fifty to the over, under five and a half, minus one eighty five, uh, George. You just said the Yankees aren't really hitting. How do you feel about the bullpen late in this game? Last night blew it in the. Um, last night was annoying. I had the Yankees and I had the in game under, and uh, I was looking for the sweep, and we know what happened late last night. So I guess I'll cut to the chase. So the Yankees going to blow another lead tonight late. I would think not. The bullpen didn't blow that game last night. I mean, they, that game was a cluster F of uh, how many mistakes can we make here? All right. I mean, the third base coach Raul waves Torres and he's out by 15 feet. What are you doing here? All right, and then uh, Rizzo makes the error. He makes that play. There's no eighth inning. Game's over. Yankees win, uh, you know, blah, 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 New York, New York. Uh, but that was an issue there. Boone, why Boone keeps bringing in Clayton Holmes in the eighth inning is beyond me. You had Luke Weaver. Weaver wasn't the problem. Rizzo made the error. Keep Weaver in. Let Holmes start a fresh inning here. You don't want this guy coming in with people on base because his ball moves all over the place. He doesn't know where it's going. He just does it. He threw one right in. The boy threw the tail of Ward last, year, last night right down Broadway. First pitch, Ward was waiting for it. I, I, I don't like the way Boone and Matt managed that. I think they're worried about Clayton Holmes because he's too strong. You know, a sinker ball, you want him to be tired. So he keeps bringing him for four or five out saves, but he's not that kind of guy because he walks bad. As I said, he doesn't know where his ball's going half the time here. So I don't like the way Boone managed that. Boone got kicked out of this game early after another interesting interference <laughs> called by the umpires, to put it nicely. So, uh... It's been that kind of night. I'm I'm in an aggravated mood tonight, even though it's a profitable night. Oh, I love, not I love your take, though, now. George. You're absolutely Boone. right. He mismanages that bullpen hard. George is absolutely correct. Boone's got to be moving in though now, like as far as all time managers. This guy, Eject- like he ejections. He he loves getting kicked out, Kurtz. Like this guy, it's all for show too, because he's a nice guy. But now it's to the point where like, it's just... He's getting like, kicked out on like, like, though. Sometimes he gets kicked out for like, what the hell are they throwing him out for? That was that was quick. But if you'll, Remember, he got thrown out if, earlier this year because a fan said something. Fan did it. Yeah, well, that he was got kicked best. out. 
But that happened in the NBA. That happened in the NBA. A guy got a technical the other day, too. Somebody was yelling, and he was yelling at, uh, he was, he was, it was a fan. It wasn't the coach. Whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that was, wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, just don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. How fragile are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In Game Live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense lines, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid Thank you. Right. This is Sports Rage. I am Renzi. The pit suppliers, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between 2 1 right now in Anaheim. And as I said earlier in the week, I like this stadium. It's got a nice vibe uh, to it. I've been to this stadium before, but not for the Angels. I've been to football games uh, here. The Rams used to play here in the old days. And, um, and uh, I saw a really cool college football game there. Color, the Colorado Buffaloes and the Tennessee Volunteers Ooh, when uh, cool. the year Colorado like won the championship. It's pretty cool. I even remember, you know what? I'm so old, actually. You know who played, Cam, in that game? Eric Bieniemy was the running back of the Colorado Buffaloes. I saw Sports Eric Bieniemy as a college football player. Darian was Hagen was the quarterback. Oh, Hagen. I liked Hagen. Hagen remember, it was Darian Hagen. Hagen. Yeah. yeah. Then it was Cordell Stewart and Westbrook and stuff. Colorado's had some good, uh, interesting players in that uh, team. Uh, you don't want to remember the Michigan game, though, Rembrandt, so that'll bring you some bad vibes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah that game. Uh, <laughs> nah, you know what? Nah, that, <laughs> you got a chance. That game really bothered me. That game really bothered me live. I remember that. It's one of those. There's, you don't remember every moment of everything. Forget exactly where I was. Now it's coming back to me quickly. I was in a casual sport. It was a Saturday, obviously. I think I was a scalper in those days, and I was sitting like at a bar, like near the 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 arena. I remember I flipped the bar stool. I remember getting up and like, <laughs> like just like I got up and I was like, no, it was I'm crazy. Not. As soon as the crazy. ball went in the air, I knew it was going to be yeah, a catch. Yeah. I was like, oh my god. He threw it like 60 yards, and uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah, he caught it in the end zone. Michigan have had uh, – I've been a part – my teams have been a part of a lot of, like, fame, bad moments. Uh, we lost to App State. We were, like, one of the first yeah. ones to lose to, like uh, – we lost as, like, 30-point favorites to Question. App State once. Was Colorado a co-national champion with 
And I know Washington yeah. was. Well, yeah, I remember they had co-national champions because they didn't have the, the final game. Who was it? Was it Nebraska? I'm trying to think yeah, who their Nebraska. co-national. No, no, it wasn't yeah. Nebraska. No, no, no. Was, uh... Who was it? I think was it, it was Washington. Washington. Yeah, it was, it was Washington. Washington. Huskies, Colorado yeah. and Washington. Yeah, that's exactly. Wow. Man, me and you are old, buddy. You remember this stuff? Wow. I'm pretty sure that's it was crazy. Washington. Yeah, it but was yeah, Washington. in those days, like you said, they split. There was no playoff and there was no BCS. People always complain about formats. Imagine young people now imagining what it used to be in the old days. Yeah. The media would vote. That was it. It was just like, but there were different polls. So you had the AP and the coaches poll. And sometimes it'd be unanimous. It wasn't often to be split, but every once in a while it would be split where just it would sort of get geographical where they'd stand up for the undefeated team. But um, all right, a lot of stuff I wanted to get to, including uh, Angel Hernandez. Let's get to some of his best of X stuff. So uh, Angel Hernandez um, has decided to announce his retirement. Roll it. And he decided to take a uh, selfie uh, <laughs> on the way out as a celebration uh, photo. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, that's good. Wow, that's smart. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, I seen there's an ad on TV that I noticed. Uh, I watch a lot of me TV and it's old shows. So every ad is for like old people. And uh, there's a company out there called Visiting Angels uh, yeah, I like Home them. Care. They'll, 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 they'll yep. come visit you. Yeah, you know, an angel will come see you daily as long as you pay them. Uh, um, and I'll make sure you're okay. Angel Hernandez Visiting is going to need that. Cause... Angels, we yeah. are top this... in home care. <laughs> I love this guy's going to trip over stuff at home care. He's a menace. He can't <laughs> see. <laughs> like, I'd be worried Angel. about him. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, if I, I'd actually check Angel Hernandez like for his driver license and stuff like that. I agree. I'd be like, listen, Good I don't know if you can see well enough to drive, sir. <laughs> like, if he came into the DMV and you're behind you, you're like Angel Hernandez. He'd be like, listen, I know you can't see, so you're, you're not getting a license. I got to tell you, Marenzi, usually, like, you forgive people over time. When Angel Hernandez said he's retiring, I'm like, good riddance, bro. Like, not even, like, forget. It's just get out get get out of the game. Like, Who just, was it? Was it Gary me. Cohn, even the uh, the Mets yeah. guy? Yeah. Oh, he, he trashed him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of like people aren't yeah. even nice. You figure on the way out, people yeah. say something. On the way out? Nice. No. He's no. like, Angel Hernandez, one of many very bad umpires, is retired. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I love it. Yeah. I mean, he that was just out there, yeah. yeah. Yep. He said that, that and uh, you know, Aaron, Aaron Boone tried to play it nice. I guess if you're still involved in the game, you can't trash him. He goes, Angel Hernandez yeah. was liked by his fellow umpires. So you can't go off on him because you're afraid there's going to be retribution from that. You know, uh, what's the big thing going on? Well, I think I think he was mistakenly made the poster boy for a bad cause. He's really not that bad. Da, 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 da. Everyone's just trying to play the game here of not getting uh, Why, calls. Was, against you, him, but, uh, was he a good, was he a good way his man? lawyer had like, to come out and nice he wasn't forced or? out. What do you he, mean? He, his wife, he, guys he wasn't come. forced out. He was forced out. There was a negotiated settlement. That's a force out. All right. They wanted you gone here. And uh, listen, I can think of a few more that should, that should go right behind him. You can say goodbye to all of them. I mean, Angel Hernandez sued baseball twice, lost both times uh, for discrimination. He went after that they uh, they weren't giving him postseason assignments, that he wasn't made a crew chief. That's because you sucked. That's why he Phoebe Buck- Buckner sucks. Buckner too. Needs He's to all go. over the place. Last year, needs to go. It was actually a surprise, though, that they there was obviously a lot of pressure because baseball really doesn't have much control over the umpires, and it bothers them. Yeah, like once you're in, you're in, and the umpires will decide when somebody goes. So clearly, somebody from the inside and or Hernandez finally didn't get enough support where he realized, all right, like, I'm just really not wanting, I don't want to take this abuse anymore. You're right. He actually sued stating that uh, it was discrimination because he was Hispanic, that he didn't get a world series assignment ever. It's like, no, you're terrible. So like, you're lucky that you didn't get fired, but you know, it's like, it's like a union job. Once you're in, you're an umpire. It's almost impossible to get you out. I was, the funniest Angel Hernandez yeah. story, though, was um, was Will Clark, who's always got great baseball stories, obviously. But Will Clark said that um, he was in a, he was in a bar restaurant once in the, in the season, and he looked over and he saw Angel Hernandez was there, you know, with a couple of non other umpires. Didn't know who they were, but Angel Hernandez was eating dinner, 
And Will Clark sent him over a couple of drinks. And Will looked over and sarcastically sort of like muttered, this guy's the worst, to like the buddies at his table. And he sent over free drinks over to Angel Hernandez, and he said that Angel Hernandez treated him great, and he never got a bad call ever again after. <laughs> That's great and, investment. Um, yeah, and then he even great. said, he goes, cost me 30 bucks, the drinks. He goes, you know, and he goes, he was so hated by everyone, he was just happy that someone actually sent him a drink and didn't, like, tell him off. <laughs> so so he's smart. Got the, it goes to show he's, it's he's, like human yeah, nature, yeah, yeah, if Yeah, if you're, if you're, you be nice to Roll him. Everyone world. hates him. Hey, Angel, how's yes. the family, buddy? You doing good? Good to see you, man. Right? Good Instead of going game. up and just looking at him like, yeah, yeah you suck. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. you know, I think the problem but was But he was smart, age, wasn't it? Had, Will Clark said, yeah, cost has, me 30 bucks in drinks. Face. Never got a bad call again from him. Brilliant. Angel Hernandez <laughs> has that face where it looks like he's had a bad day before he even gets to the ballpark. Right? Yeah. Like, the, yeah. he had a fight with the wife. The dog ran away. The kids are all, yeah. you know, failing high school, whatever it might be. And it, it looked like he took it out. He was angry before he ever, you know, stepped on the field. I, when I used to ref men's hockey league, I had this one ref who was a great guy off the rink. But we, even though for his fellow refs, I would say it, as soon as he stepped on the rink, as soon as he skated at first skate, he looked like he was angry. He was a completely different person. He was already, wait, wait, I guess, waiting to get yelled at. And he was feeling it before anything even happened. You know, in pregame skate. And I think Angel Hanley was the same exact guy. He's probably very I nice don't... off the field, but he's miserable on it. I don't know. Like this whole thing. I don't like, uh, I don't think I'm going to be the one to ever to get the interview, but it would be a fascinating sit down with him. Agreed. A one on one with Angel Hernandez. What's your side of the story? Right. What's the, like, why, you know what I mean? What's the perception that you feel is unfair? Right. You don't really hear umpires talk too much, but there's always a story behind everything. He sort of did become the public face of stuff. Right? Because, you know, it's his name. It's an easy, rememberable name. Right? There's a lot about umpires, referees, MMA judges. But he really was back. Let's just be honest. Horrible. <laughs> he was back. Whether it's a charge or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that wasn't called or vice versa. Give me a 48-minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on SportsGrid. Who are these guys? It's amazing. They're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world, and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt, for goodness sakes. That trout injury really is a bummer, too, because people thought he was going to have a big, a big year. And I, I look, I don't feel bad for the Angels. I, I, I don't like Mike Trout in Anaheim. I thought he should have left when his contract was up. In game live, prime time only on Sports Grid. With the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on SportsGrid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm -hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid This is Sports Rage. I'm Renzi. 
George Kurtz in the house, Cam Stewart. Uh, what is he in Cameron in level three? 1-1, one, one, Mariners and Strohs still uh, right now. Yankees up 2-1 uh, in the uh, bottom of the eighth inning uh, right now. We'll keep our eye on these two uh, baseball games. We're getting into the time of the year right now where baseball is going to take center stage. CFL football, though, kicks off now in eight days' time. And, in fact, it's the same night that the NBA Finals start next um, next Thursday night. The NBA Finals uh, start and the CFL season starts as well. Uh, we'll definitely hit some CFL tonight with, uh, with Ian Cameron. We'll see what uh, he has to say about some win totals and uh, player props. I'm going to have a full complement of uh, picks uh, for you before kickoff. Want to get through the weekend and then uh, next week we'll really dive in and I'll have, I've got quite a few best bets. I'm on top of uh, the CFL preseason uh, so far. All right, I wanted to get uh, back to the baseball. The Los Angeles Dodgers finally found a team that they could beat. If you're in the <laughs> middle of a losing streak, you get the New York Mets. And the Mets really are a sitcom where whatever can go wrong does go wrong. It, you know, weird things happen to them, some deserving, some not. But, you know, I actually watch, like, pretty much every pitch, every inning of this series. And misplayed balls, bad base running, <laughs> just like one, one thing, like, one thing after another, they're getting frustrated. You can tell the frustration of this team as a whole. And it sort of boiled over uh, today. And it got, like, kind of comical and crazy at the same point in time. Jorge Lopez uh, lost it today. So, Otani goes deep on him. All right, Otani, like, ripped one pretty hard. Like, whatever. It was, like, really hard hits. <laughs> Otani smokes one. Then he got pissed off about a check swing call after. And, dude, it was 9-3. So, I don't know what the hell you're so mad about. You know what I mean? So, it's 9-3. He gets pissed off by the third uh, uh, a uh, check swing call. Didn't go his way. Even though it was the right call, the third base umpire doesn't play around. Ron Darling brought it up during the broadcast. He said, this guy, like, is not the guy to, like, chirp. So, he got kicked out of the game. And then he doubled down on the way off the field. He threw his glove into the stands, which you don't often see. All right, like you know, you, you, you don't you don't see that very often at the big league level. Although the Mets are they a big league team? It's debatable. So um, he threw his glove into the stands, and and after the game, he was asked about it, and um, and he was told that you know. The manager didn't like it, and did he have any regrets about throwing his glove? Uh, the manager thought it was an unprofessional move, and uh, you know you can't do that. Do we have the audio of this, guys? Because it's too good of Coach his response. Says that he understands the emotion, but that that particular action of throwing your glove into the stands was unacceptable. Looking back on it, do you regret doing that? No, no, I don't. I don't regret it. Uh, I think I've been looking the worst team in probably in the whole f-ing MLB. So, you know, whatever happened, happened. So, whatever they want to do it. I'll be tomorrow here if they want me, you know, whatever they want to do. So, I'll, I'm going to keep doing this thing, you know. So, I'm healthy on whatever, you know, on whatever to do, you know. I'm, I'm ready to come back tomorrow and they want me to be here so i'll be here well they don't and they designated him for assignment they let him go so and the thing is when i first saw and heard the clip guys i was like you know what maybe it was lost in translation his english isn't good he's frustrated you're getting him right after the game here did he say i'm the worst teammate in all of major league baseball that's what i was like gonna let him off the hook for but he was asked after, um, we don't want to misunderstand what you said. Did you just say the worst team in baseball? And he said, yeah, yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> yeah. Like, he, yeah, like, who is it? Like, who, like, I don't want to credit it. Sportsnet New York, et cetera. But <clears throat> one, uh, one, one, we'll get the media member that actually said, I clarified with him if he misspoke. And he said, no, I didn't uh, misspeak. So he's been designated for assignment. He wanted off the Mets. You're off the Mets. I like what he said. Well. They can do what they want, Cam. Well, they don't that's want you here. He's gone. And this is the best. This is way better than getting a ball in a game. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. My buddy caught Jorge Lopez's glove 
<laughs> Sign? It gets a little, wor- gets a little oh, worse, by beautiful. the way. Beautiful. Oh, Guess yeah. what fan caught uh, a, a fan of what? Yeah, team no, caught okay. Caught. You don't have to tell me because uh, I see everything, Kurt. Why were there a row of Yankee fans at this baseball game? Yeah, I wanted to go uh, to today as well. I thought I'd go. Uh, I thought about going to the other uh, game. Uh, it was a nice night to go see a ball game. Oh, yeah, Mets, Mets Dodgers. You're the Dodgers in town. Hey, Dodgers. Right? Yeah, yeah. See the Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm a fan too. Yeah. I want to see the Dodgers. Go see Otani. Yep. You know, uh, Freeman. But Mets. yeah, I caught I that understand. though. It was that... a bunch of Japanese dudes and Yankee fans. <laughs> Amaz- <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's the best. And it's it's starting already here though. They're, they're starting to call for Mendoza's head now. First year manager. We're not even two months in. Or I guess we're barely two months in, and they're calling for Mendoza's head. Met fans, man, got a lot. Wasn't this it's always not the manager? To... What is that? Come on, man. Like it's always the manager, eh? Like all the time. It's it's his fault. Of course. Sure it is. That's, that's the first one's going to get blamed. What are they going to do? You, it's the old saying: you can't fire twenty six players. You know, there were a few of One got fired. I guess you could fire one of them. And there'll be a couple more that'll be gone before the trade deadline on July 30th. You remember, you go back in time, Kurtz. Oh, Uncle Steve, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and we're going to take the world over and screw the Yankees and all Uncle screw Steve. everybody. But didn't yeah. they screw up? What were we told all of season? This was going to be, you know, they got rid of the Verlander the contract, got rid of the shares of the yeah. contract, and this was going to be a blog yeah. year. But then they signed J.D. Martinez, which made no sense. Uh, Shouldn't you be playing Beatty, be playing Vientos, find out what, what you have here? But you sign a veteran who, where are you going? You weren't going anywhere. Especially with that pitching no, they don't staff. have a plan. It made, made no sense to me. To me, if I'm the New York Mets, they need the right, you know, see this all the time with these rich people. They need the right baseball guy. They need an Alex, yes. Antho- uh, Alex Anthopoulos type. Like, you know, you just forget, you got all the money? Go steal a GM, bro. Like go steal like a smart Stearns. baseball. They were dying for Stearns you know? for years, and they got him. Give him yeah. time. He can't fix so, it one year. But they, it's and now the wheels are really starting to fall off. Pete Alonso's gone, bro. He's not. He's not. Uh, he's good. Let's gone. just call it. So now the question is, where does Pete Alonso end up? Whether it's a charge or a block or a, a you know a, a deflection that was wrong or a foul that should have been called that what wasn't called or vice versa, give me a 48 minute report and people that will understand that there's so many mistakes that the referees make over the course of the game that referees, ready folks, don't decide the outcome. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. are these guys it's amazing they're supposed to be the greatest athletes in the world and yet they can't walk and chew gum at the same time without getting hurt for goodness sakes that trout injury really is a bummer too because people thought he was gonna have a big a big year and i i look i don't feel bad for the angels i i i don't like mike trout in anaheim i thought he should have left when his contract was up in game live prime time only on sports grid with the onset of NIL and the transfer portal, it is allowing players to develop further in college and guys that would maybe be stuck on the bench at a power program and not have as much shine are having the ability to find themselves in the spotlight. Wayne Kiffin came out and said you need to get bigger and more physical in terms of the offense and defense alliance, and that's why he went out and recruited that talent. Inside the transfer portal, only on Sports Grid. And now you have to qualify and these majors you, you just you got to go do it man like and it just comes off really petty to sit up there and be like i'm not you know what you signed up for so i, I don't like the pettiness and um i i 100 percent think taylor gooch should be in the major championships mm-hmm. so in the same note i'm saying this but also it's like hey this is the world in which we live in right now and, and, you, and you don't deserve anything only on sports grid
<clears throat> Last night I tweeted out uh, something. It was yesterday about uh, baseball. It was a no-hitter. It was a big catch. Bellinger had a catch. And I said, oh, I said, nah, nearly every game is a no-hitter nowadays. I had a bunch of people tweet me after. What the hell are you talking about? Are you watching the games? Et cetera. And, you know, people come at me. Oh, do you watch games? They don't come up with any, like, facts or anything like this. But it's at an all-time low right now. And the average time, guys, three point, um, it's nearly four minutes now, 3.7 of balls in play, in between minutes of balls in play. And I talked about what other sport can you, are you able to do interviews while you are playing? Because nothing happens, right? Like outfielders, you watch Sunday Night Baseball, Dude, outfielders do like two, three innings. They never even get a ball. It's just they're just talking, right? It is talk. Um, infielders are doing it now. It's to the point nothing happens. You get nearly four minutes in between a ball actually being hit in play in baseball on average right now. Strikeout, uh, George, 100% higher than it was 100 years ago. Strikeout rate is at an all-time high. And at this rate right now, the league batting average right now, is 240. 240. 240. 240 used to get you cut. Now, whatever, dude. Like, it, it, the average is 240. That's the lowest average in baseball it would be since 1968, Kurtz. It's caught up, bro. Players would rather go. Remember that? Oh, they you know, let's ban the shift. That'll work. Dude, I, as I tweeted, you could take out everybody off the field and players would still try to hit a home run. Like, you know what I mean? That's still. Remember who was the uh, the first baseman of the Yankees? Who was the guy there that said, uh, remember years ago? Oh, my God. Yeah, Teixeira. He said, yeah. well, yeah, I could just lay it down with their, you know, and I could take the single, they but they don't pay that. me to do that. Yeah, I get paid yeah. to hit home runs. That now everyone does. Be insane. Will Smith is a, sort of the modern guy of this. Like, he'll be, you know what I mean, two for 30, but he's so happy he hit two home runs in the last two days. Whatever. The guy's making $24 million a year now. You know, dude, you go one, they would rather you go one for five with a home run than three oh, yeah. for five with a double and a couple of singles. And that's why we're at where we're at right now in the league batting average. So what is it going to be? The Mendoza line, George? It's ridiculous, bro. The problem with the game is uh, it's really, a, a, it's not like what it was when we were younger, right? I don't want to sound like the old man, get off my uh, lawn here, but they uh, analytics will tell you, you can, you're not going to get three singles in a row. All right. So no point in doing that. All right. Hit, go for the home run. And the other problem is the pitchers are taught nowadays to throw the ball as hard as you can for as long as you can. And guess what? When you're done, we'll bring in the next guy who's going to do the same Oh, that's exact definitely a fact. The yeah. average, that's the other thing, guys. The average speed. See, I got, I'm coming in with numbers here. The average speed now of a pitch in Major League Baseball is 93.8. That's impressive. That's the, that's just the younger, average. Man, if you threw over 90, that's you average. were great. Yeah, yeah. If you threw over 90 yeah, miles an hour, you used to be a big deal. Oh, 94 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, now Steens is throwing 102. The average pitch is 94. And yeah. as you stated, guys, no, I can leave it all out here. I'm only staying in for an inning or two. Yep. And we leave it a lot harder than that. But George, to your point, now they want to lower, lower the mound. That's going to be their new yeah. thing. Yeah. Good call, Gabe. I but think, just because, I just think because you the analytics say that, back. though, you still have I to have situational hitting. Why did the Kansas City Royals win the World Series years ago? They were the biggest small ball team out there, bro. They had Dyson and all these other guys slap hitters. They stole bags. They manufactured runs. And you still need to do that. That is the whole thing. Just because we're going one way doesn't mean you can't still do it the other way. You got to think about what the situation is in the damn game and play accordingly. But baseball is still 60 feet, 6 inches. In the same way forever. Human beings are much, much bigger, stronger, faster than ever. Right? Right? Than ever. How, why are we not moving the mound back? Why they did they they're, they're doing that experiment and it didn't change that much actually. Like the pitchers could sort of adjust, you know, adjust to it. But the thing is, there's already a ton of arm injuries. So you imagine George walking in and telling the Major League Baseball Players Union and a bunch of pitchers, we're moving the mound back. They're gonna be like, all right, we already have the most injuries we've already had as it is. And that's another thing, too, with baseball, and it's freaking annoying, and it hurts. This is where analytics, like, Michael, oh, I'm bringing this here. Michael Wilbon got ripped. I'm gonna you, could have a no, a you could have a no-hitter going, Cam. They'll yeah. pull you. 
Of doesn't even matter. Oh, yeah. It'll be the eighth inning. It'll be like, why well, is it 103 pitches tough? And you're a nobody. You're on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Let them throw the damn no hitter. Damn like, right. you know, let them try. Who cares? You might do it in nine pitches. What, the Yankees are losing now? Oh, here we go. He's just blowing another save. Yeah, yeah.